Hello everyone, I am Juhan from Seoul National University. I am delighted to introduce our work Eagle Eye, which is an AR system to find a missing person in crowded spaces. This work was done in collaboration with Dr. Sunghyun Choi at Samsung Research Korea and my advisor, Professor Young Hee Lee. In our everyday lives, there are many cases where we need to find a target person in crowded spaces. A police officer chasing a crime suspect is one example. A kindergarten instructor monitoring a group of children in a field trip is another one. So how good are we at finding a target person in crowded scenes? For example, take a look at the picture that we have taken in a crowded subway station. Can you try identifying where this man on the left top is in the scene? Actually, he is over here. Most of you will have had problem finding him very quickly, mainly because of two reasons. First, there are many faces in the scene. And second, the faces appear very small. We have actually done a simple user study where the participants in age 20s or 30s with sharp cognitive abilities were asked to find a target person on the images displayed on the laptop screen. We found that the latency and accuracy of finding a target depends on several factors. Let me show you some representative results. First, in terms of latency, we have seen that when the scene is more crowded, the latency in finding the target increases as well. Another interesting factor that we have found is that when we are finding a per person in whose face we are not familiar with, it takes longer, becoming as high as 16 seconds in crowded scenes. Similarly, we found that the accuracy drops to 75% when finding an unfamiliar face in crowded scenes. So in summary, when finding a target in crowded scene, we become cognitively overloaded and often fail to do the job successfully. Motivated by the problem, we propose Eagle Eye, an AR system where the user will scan the crowded scene with this AR glass or mobile device and the device runs the DNN-based face identification algorithm and pinpoints where the target is in real time. There are two key challenges in designing the UI system. The first challenge is the identification accuracy. When we take a photo of a crowded scene from distance, faces appear very small, with most of the facial details missing. This makes accurate recognition very difficult, even for state-of-the-art DNNs. The second challenge is the computational complexity. Face identification algorithm requires to run a sequence of DNNs repetitively. Specifically, the face detection network should run on a high resolution scene image to detect all the small faces, and recognition network should run on each face detected. This workload is very challenging to run in real time on resource constrained mobile devices. So let's first talk, talk about the first challenge regarding the identification accuracy. As mentioned before, faces captured from distance lacks resolutions and the accuracy of DNS drop. The figure shows a visualized example of how the feature map outputs of a DNN is trained, where the point with the same color represents the same identity. As we can see, when the resolution drops, the points that were originally separated very clearly start to overlap with each other dropping the recognition accuracy. Now, some of you who are familiar with computer vision algorithms might think, why don't we apply a simple image super resolution to enhance the resolution and accuracy? Well, that is possible, but the problem here is that state-of-the-art approaches are mostly GAN-based and focuses on making the reconstructed faces uh, very realistic at the cost of distorting the facial features. For example, a state-of-the-art GAN reconstructs a given input low-resolution face to a young man, whereas the original identity was an old woman. And this kind of behavior does not help much in uh, enhancing the recognition accuracy. So in summary, GANs make realistic faces fail to preserve the identity. To tackle the challenge, we designed a specialized network that can reconstruct high-resolution faces with the identity features preserved to enhance the recognition accuracy. We named it the Identity Clarification Network, or ICN in short, which looks like the figure in the, in the slide. 
It is empowered by several state-of-the-art techniques to achieve the goal. So first, we utilize a phase landmark estimation network to help the reconstruction process. We also employ the phase feature extractor and a phase similarity loss function to preserve the identity features in the reconstructed phases. Finally, we utilize a discriminator-based training architecture used in state-of-the-art GANs to make the reconstructed phases look realistic. Please refer to our paper for more details on the architectures of the ICN. Our baseline ICN achieved some accuracy gain, but we seeked for more chances of improvement. We actually dug a little deeper to see how the feature distance changes with the resolution for the same and different identity pairs. Interestingly, we have found that when the resolution drops, the feature distance between a pair of faces with the same identity drops significantly, whereas that of the different pairs remain about the same. This means that the challenge of low resolution face recognition is mostly coming from the difficulty of accepting the true positives rather than denying the false negatives. So how can you enhance the true positives? Our main observation is that in most of the usage scenarios, we actually know who we are looking for and have plenty of reference photos to of the target that we can utilize to fine tune the ICN towards the target. So for example, in a parent finding a missing child scenario, the parent will have ample amount of pictures of her child. So our idea is to utilize such reference photos to fine tune the ICN to enhance accuracy. Specifically, we take the reference photos, downsample it, and feed it to the pre-trained ICN to uh, get the reconstructed outputs and use the ICN training loss to uh, fine tune the, the pre-trained ICN weights to overfit the ICN towards the target. And actually, you have found that this kind of process greatly helps in enhancing the true positives at a relatively small amount of increase in the false positives. So that was the first uh, challenge and our solution regarding the identification accuracy. Let's move on to the next challenge, which is the computational complexity. So as you can see, phase identification pipeline requires to run a sequence of DNNs repetitively, specific, specifically the phase detection network over the high resolution scene image to detect tiny faces, and the ICN and the phase recognition network on each phase detected. How long does it take? Each DNN inference time is in the range of 100 millisecond scale, even on high-end mobile GPUs, resulting in more than 14 seconds latency in a scene with 30 faces. This is not acceptable, and we needed to optimize the latency as well. To tackle the latency challenge, we design a technique called the Content Adaptive Parallel Execution, which applies different pipelines depending on the scene content to accelerate the multi-DNN phase identification latency. So first, given an input scene like this, there are many regions containing no faces at all. Edge-based background filtering removes such background regions to avoid the waste of computation. Second, for the remaining regions, the detected faces have various recognition difficulties based on how it is captured. Variation adaptive face recognition adaptively selects the recognition pipeline for each detected face based on its recognition difficulty. Finally, identifying faces in different regions of the scene is spatially independent. Spatial pipelining processes these regions in parallel over mobile and cloud. In this video, I will focus on explaining the latter two techniques in detail. So first, let's go over the variation adaptive phase recognition. After the edge-based background filtering, we run the phase detection on remaining regions. For the detected faces, the recognition accuracy heavily depends on the phase variation. Especially for easy faces with large size and heading towards the camera, using a heavy rec recognition network would be an overkill. For example, applying the heavy arc-based network incurs 20 times latency increase compared to lightweight mobile face net with only a marginal 0.4% accuracy gain. Accordingly, we adaptively apply different recognition pipeline for each face to optimize the latency accuracy trade-off. So first, 
for low resolution phases, we apply the ICN first and then apply heavy arc based network. The remaining large phases are classified by their poles, which can be found by the phase landmark locations, which are commonly available in state of the art phase detection networks. So, for, for profile phases, which are hard to recognize, they are processed with heavy arc based network. And finally, the remaining easy ones are recognized by lightweight mobile face net. Let's now go over the spatial pipelining. So the final part of our content adaptive parallel execution is spatial pipe pipelining, which processes different regions in the image in parallel over mobile and cloud. To maximize the effect of parallelization, we need to efficiently distribute the workload over multiple processors. So the above figure summarizes how we select different pipelines depending on the scene content. As we can see, we have four DNS to run and three processors over mobile and cloud. Our goal is to find the best mapping between the two to maximize the impact of parallel execution. To, to determine the DNN processor mapping, Let's go back to the workload figure. The first detection stage involves running a DNN on a high resolution image. Running it on mobile GPU incurs high memory IO latency and offloading it to the cloud incurs large network bandwidth consumption. And also considering that the latter recognition part is actually the main bottleneck in the end-to-end -end latency, we decided to run the detection on mobile CPU. And luckily for the retina phase detector that we use, the latency is only about 1.2 times lower than running on GPU. The second ICN plus recognition stage latency is proportional to the number of phases. Running heavy ICN and arc phase on mobile GPU incurs about 500 milliseconds per phase, whereas it can be done in less than 15 milliseconds on a cloud GPU. So we offload them to the cloud and run only the lightweight mobile phase net on local GPU. And actually, I would like to note that offloading only the small faces are also beneficial as the data size that need to be offloaded to the cloud is very small. Finally, based on the above DNN processor mapping, we utilize the spatial independence of the task and parallelize their execution on mobile and cloud. Specifically, given an input scene, after the, the edge-based background filtering filters out the background regions, we process the remaining regions in blocks. We first detect the faces on block one and recognizes the faces that are detected while detecting the, detecting the faces in the next block number two. And this process continues until all the regions are processed. So putting all of these techniques, our eagle eye system looks like this. So first, given an input scene, the spatial pipelining first device and processes the, the image in the units of image blocks. Edge-based background filtering filters, filters out the background blocks. And for the remaining ones, we detect the faces. And for the detected faces, they are processed by variation adaptive face recognition in parallel over the mobile and cloud. For the evaluation, we would like to answer the three most important questions. So first, how much accuracy improvement does Eagle Eye achieve? Second, how much latency improvement does Eagle Eye achieve? And finally, how effectively does Eagle Eye utilize the mobile and cloud resources? Let's first see the face recognition accuracy. As we can see, the fine tuning enables to let the reconstructed face to have the fine details of the original identity, such as the wrinkles or the eyelids. This enables the ICN to enhance the true positive but greatly by 78%, with only 14% increase in the false positives. Second, we measured the end-to-end -end latency on LG V50 smartphone under 11 megabits per second LTE connection. We have actually classified the test scenes into three levels of crowdedness, that is the low, medium, and high. As the first figure shows, Eagle Eye achieves significant latency gain compared to baseline of running detection, ICN, recognition three-step pipeline, fully on mobile in, in a sequential manner. Specifically, whereas the baseline sequential ex execution latency grows with the crowdedness, 
that is the number of phases, Eagle Eye efficiently parallelizes the processing steps and the latency it remains almost similar regardless of the crowdedness. In detail, on a scene with 20 phases, Eagle Eye achieves about nine times latency gain. And finally, the figure on the right shows that the three techniques in our content adaptive parallel execution all contributes in reducing the overall latency. So summarizing, the Eagle Eye's latency gain increases with crowdedness and it reaches as high as nine times for the high, highly crowded scenes. Lastly, we show the latency and accuracy on high level crowdedness scenes compared with full on device and full offloading solutions. First, in terms of end to end latency, we can see that Eagle Eye achieves lower latency than running everything full on device and fully offloading the image in raw format. However, we observed that full offloading using the JPEG compression, JPEG image compression results in slightly lower latency. However, we saw that JPEG compression actually incurs a latency drop due to the distortion caused in the, uh, in the image, diminishing the gain obtained from the ICN. One last thing that we want to highlight is that Eagle Eye only offloads the large profile or small faces, which incurs only 108 kilobytes of data on average to process a scene, which is very favorable for outdoor scenarios with relatively low network bandwidth. Before I finish the talk, I would like to discuss the limitations of our system and possible rooms for improvements. While Eagle Eye achieves significant latency gain compared to baselines, it still takes about one second to process the whole scene. We conjecture that more improvements will be needed to further optimize the performance as well as the usability of our system. First of all, we can consider extending Eagle Eye to video processing. While Eagle Eye considers processing the video in only in a frame-wise manner, we believe that utilizing the temporal redundancy between continuous frames will greatly help enhance latency and accuracy. Second, while we currently consider only a static mapping between the DNNs and the processors, dynamically adjusting it based on the input scene contents, as well as possibly the network conditions, will also further improve the performance of our system. Finally, the user interface designed to utilize our system as a full AR service will also help improve the usability. Specifically, how to deliver the outputs of our system to the user to actually help their cognitive abilities will also need considerations. Let me summarize our talk. In this paper, we presented Eagle Eye, an AR-based person identification system on mobile devices. Designing Eagle Eye involves two key challenges. First, the accurate identification of small faces, and second, the latency of executing multi-DNN face identification algorithm on resource-constrained mobile devices. To tackle the challenge, we design an identity clarification network to enhance the low-resolution face recognition accuracy, which enhances the true positive by 78% at the cost of 14% false positive. Second, we design a content adaptive parallel execution pipeline, which accelerates the high, the high end to end latency by nine times compared to a sequential on device execution. Thank you for watching our video. In case you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you.